the galley, the little tin man here again. Um, we've just been asking some questions to guys on the forum about how much that uh, little telephone generator could put out in the way of voltage. So um, I decided to come down to a video on that. I made a bit of an interesting discovery on the way. Um, I'm using a cap out of a microwave which is AC of course however they work quite fine on DC and the good thing is they're not polarity conscious so if you put in DC into those AC caps you can plug it in either way, it doesn't matter um, so in saying that our UB telephone generator here hooked up the flywheel to to make run by pulse motor. Uh, it's probably only doing about 500 RPM. It's going pretty slow at the moment. Um, yeah, around 85 volts coming out of that thing, which is um, not a bad effort really for very slow RPM. I spaced the coils out a bit from the rotor since the last video. Now if you ever build an SSG or something, coil spacing is very important. I only had it in that much, you know, uh, five mil maybe closer. And just by pulling those two coils out, five mil, that dropped the amp draw on the run battery down about 70 milliamps, and I only lost about three milliamps to the charge battery. So just remember that when you're building SSGs or pulse motors, coil spacing is very important. Um, it'll all come down to what kind of core you use, what size your magnets are. A good hint when selecting magnets for your machine, make them about half to three quarters the size of your core. Um, keep them smaller, about um, half size. This is why this one's not running so well. This was actually made for a bigger machine, this flywheel. But um, they're the magnets that are in it, 19 by 25s, neodymium magnets, uh, N52s, which happens to be the same diameter as the coils. So it's what happens when you use the same or bigger, which is what you want for a generator, but not for a pulse motor. Um, you end up using a lot of amps because the transistor stays switched on for too long and you get a lot more drag back towards your core from the magnets. So magnet size, coil spacing, very important. Like I said, keep your magnets about half the size of your core, half, no more than three quarters. And then um, before you go screwing your coil down, um, just slide it backwards and forwards until your amp draw down, is down as low as it can go, but your charging amps are still as high as they can go. Get that happy medium in between. So anyway, that's what we came here to do. Um, so it's 85 volts, around about coming out of that at that very slow speed, so that's pretty good. <coughs> um, so I decided to, <coughs> excuse me, just put some pretty lights in it. Uh, just a coil out of a microwave off of one of the motors. Um, you'll find normally two of these in your microwave, sometimes three. One will be for the um, turntable and the other one for the cooling fan. Uh, I have a few of them now. Now anyone that's building pulse motors get hold of an old microwave. which I never used to do, I never thought about until a member by the name of Cultus went through and showed me something that I didn't even think about or cross my mind, so very good information there from Cultus. So I just chucked a couple of LEDs on there so we just stick it near the um, inside of the magnets and get some pretty lights, make sure it doesn't get sucked onto the magnets otherwise it get a bit messy. But when I went to hook up this other one, this is 
where I found the interesting thing. Now we know with magnets, just like that, clunk clunk. Sorry guys, but I was using that outside manufacturer's specifications. Um, thankfully there was no explosion. As you know, these are the magnets I got in my flywheel. They sit like that, of course. Um, north one end, south the other, vice versa, whichever. But in the middle we have a neutral, which in theory we shouldn't be able to get any power from. While I was messing around with this one, got my little LED there, as you can see. No matter where I slide along that magnet, power never goes out so that's right in the centre of the magnet now the neutral field and the light's still going so nowhere can I slide that along from outside to inside that we get a zero power so even in the neutral part which is right there the light still goes. So if we can pull power from the neutral part of the magnetic field, um, does that not mean no back EMF? Because it's got an equal amount of north and south on the core of the coil. So I'll be something I'm going to look a little further into. Uh, 2.5 volt LED, 35 milliamps, um, hooked up to my power supply. They actually pull about 41, but they're rated at 35. Yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. No loss of power. Well, there is a loss of power, but even right in the centre of the magnetic field from the permanent magnets, going past the coil, the LED still flashes. So, something new I've learned, I always thought the neutral part would produce no power at all. Anyway, that's um, our discovery for the day, whilst doing something else, and that's how these things happen, most of the time by accident, or experimenting. So, um, anyone out there that's interested in this sort of thing, making well, it's a new discovery to me anyway, it's probably been found a long time ago, but for me it's new, about being able to get power out of a coil from the neutral field of a magnet. Um, pop on over, join up, and uh, these things you'll find along with us, www.iaec.forumco.com where everyone's friendly and everything is used outside of manufacturer specifications. Cheers from the Tin Man.